First of all, whether or not your death has a 100% fixed probability depends on how stringently you mean 100%. If we get right down to it, we can't know that we're not, say, living in some sort of computer simulation. If that's the case, the real world could be anything you could imagine with any sort of arbitrary physics and rules. Nothing, with perhaps the exception of math and logic, can be known for sure. But that makes for a boring argument, so let's start with the premise that reality exists and is pretty much how we observe it. Not too much to ask, right? The first thing you'll realize when you start thinking about this is that to have a non-zero chance of dying, you have to live forever. We're not talking about just living indefinitely long, replacing organs as you go and whatnot, but instead, I should be able to name any time in the future, and you'll still be around. Let's take a look at what that will take. 100 years. I'll assume you're in your early 20s right now, so I have a number to work with. The longest living person that I'm aware of was Jean Kelment, who lived to the age of 122. So if you want to live another 100 years, you could maybe do it with just good genes and good luck. We're only looking for a non-zero chance, so we're doing good so far. 200 years. Congratulations. You've lived another 200 years and managed to break all records of human lifespan previously known. To get to this point, unprecedented medical advances have been made. New organs can be grown, replaced as you need them, and methods have been devised to keep your brain cells healthy, or at least to replace them bit by bit. Or maybe you do get a brain replacement every now and then, but your old memories personality, intelligence, etc., are imprinted on it. Would that still count as you? For the sake of argument, let's say, sure. Why not? Almost as important as the advances in medical technology is your access to it. Perhaps this technology is available only to the rich and influential. Or maybe it's so cheap and easy everyone can use it. In any case, you've managed to discover the fountain of youth, and you have a long life ahead of you. 10,000 years. A lot has changed in your lifetime. You're one of the oldest humans alive, having been lucky enough to be in the first generation that had access to effective immortality. Aging and disease are distant memories. You've managed to live through the strife caused by the end of death. Perhaps that elixir of immortality is available to only a select few. Or perhaps humanity is spread beyond Earth to cope with an ever-growing population. Or maybe childbirth is strictly controlled. Whatever happened, society lives on. And you with it. A hundred thousand years... You've managed to go a thousand centuries without your head getting crushed under the back wheels of a bus. Kudos. A million years. How much memory can the human mind hold anyway? Do you remember your childhood? Your first kiss? The face of your parents? Perhaps you have some sort of external memory. How recognizable would you be now to yourself in the year... 2013 AD. Are you still human, even? Whatever you are, let's say that you're still you, and you've lived this long. You've seen the rise and fall of countless civilizations. Most of human history is in your mind. The invention of agriculture in the city happened a mere 10,000 years before you were born. At this point, that's pretty much a rounding error in your age. 10 to the power of 9 years. The Earth is about 5.54 billion years old now. You've been around for 
18% of that. When you were born, there had been five major mass extinction events in Earth's history. Has another one happened by now? Perhaps a giant comet or meteor has struck the Earth in your lifetime, shrouding it in a cloud of debris that blocked the sun. Maybe a nearby star went supernova and bathed the Earth in gamma radiation, driving you and everyone else underground. Whatever has or hasn't happened, humanity must have godlike technology by now for you to have survived this long. We're definitely in the realm of science fiction now, but you said 100% certainty, so why not? 3 times 10 to the power of 9 years. The Milky Way and the nearby Andromeda galaxy merge. You've seen Andromeda grow in the night sky from the little smudge it is today to a giant sky-filling wonder. Don't worry, galaxies are mostly empty space so it's very unlikely that our sun will be hit by another star. You and whoever else is around will have to think of a name for the new galaxy that forms. 5 times 10 to the power of 9 years. You're about as half as old as the Earth now, and the sun is dying. As it burns through its hydrogen fuel, it begins to fuse helium and heavier elements. The sun expands and swallows up the planet Mercury, then Venus. You had better hope that there was a well-funded space program sometime in the last few billion years, because Earth is not a fun place right now. The oceans have boiled away, and the surface is a scourged desert, to say the least. At noon, the giant red sun fills the entire sky from horizon to horizon. Hopefully you've invested in a nice retirement home on Europa. 10 to the power of 10 years. You're about as half as old as the universe and Earth and the rest of the solar system is long gone. Has the problem of traveling faster than light ever been solved? Can you zip between the stars with your warp drive? Or do you just accept that the trip will take a while? You've certainly got the time to travel, and if you're going at relativistic speeds, it doesn't even seem to take that long to you. By now, lots of good books have likely been written, so hopefully you've, you'll have something to keep yourself busy on your voyages between stars. 10 to the power of 11 years. The galaxies in the local group begin to merge together into one giant galaxy. Guess you'll have to come up with yet another galaxy name. 2 times 10 to the power of 12 years. Remember how you had to keep coming up with galaxy names? Well, the universe is constantly expanding and all other galaxies have receded beyond the edge of the observable universe. So, since there's only one galaxy sitting in the middle of a black emptiness that stretches for billions of light years in each direction, it seems kind of redundant to bother naming it. When you meet new alien life forms and civilizations, you try to tell them that the universe used to be full of galaxies, just like the one you're in now, but it seems a little far-fetched to them. 3 times 10 to the power of 12 years. You and whatever is left of humanity and the other races you've met clearly have amazing powers to have lasted this long. You may as well get a hobby. Why not find a planet with primitive, intelligent life and convince them you're God? Get a few friends together and get followers on different continents, and see whose worshippers dominate the world. 10 to the power of 14 years. Star formation ceases. The stars that currently exist burn out one by one leaving dimly glowing dwarf stars, fast-spinning pulsars, and black holes. The night sky, assuming you're even on a planet right now, grows darker with each passing eon as the stars wink out of existence. You've been around a long time, and you start to feel an emotion you almost forgot the existence of. An existential fear of your ultimate fate. 
10 to the power of 15 years. You're having a hard time finding a welcoming planet. The ones that haven't fallen into their parent stars have flung into interstellar space, drifting forever in the cold darkness. Perhaps you and what's left of the other intelligent races have undertaken a massive engineering project to keep the light of life burning in a dying universe. You and the other others build an artificial star at the center of a Dyson sphere, a solar system-sized construct surrounding your new sun. This is the last bastion of civilization and intelligent life. A flickering candle in the infinite darkness. Memories of everything and everyone that ever was is stored in vast libraries. You and the other immortals try to discover new physics to stave off the inevitable. Ten to the power of eighteen years, you stare into the abyss, wondering if there are other bastions of civilizations like yours that exist beyond the edge of the observable universe. Ten to the power of twenty years. Similar to the fate of the planets, stellar remnants are flung from the galaxy or begin to fall into black holes. The one galaxy grows smaller and denser, increasing the speed of this process. You and the immortals are mindful of this and carefully plot the trajectory of your home. Perhaps you're somehow finding fuel for it to keep the star at its center burning, or maybe you have to keep making new ones. As the last galaxy dies, you're concerned that you can't keep this up forever. You continue your study of physics. No new discoveries have been made in eons. But you keep looking for loopholes in the laws of nature that might save you. Many others have decided that this is futile and have accepted their fate, leaving your collective to drift lifeless among the remnants of the stars. Ten to the power of forty years. Protons, one of the subatomic particles that, along with neutrons and electrons, make up the atoms and molecules of all matter that you interact with, most of them are gone by now having decayed in a slow but inevitable process. All regular matter that's left is a rare resource. If you've somehow, miraculously, against all odds, made it to this point, you're most likely alone. Everything is cold, dark, empty, and unforgiving. Ten to the power of a hundred years, all that's left in the universe is you somehow, and black holes. How are you even still alive? The vast majority of your existence, so much so that everything else is barely even worth mentioning, has just been you floating in darkness with nothing but black holes for company. Even they are starting to vanish, as they evaporate through hawking radiation, shrinking in mass, and then winking out of existence. Any years beyond... There are still some photons, electrons, and other things flying about, but the universe is so vast and empty that they hardly ever interact with each other. It's uncertain what the future holds at this point, but you won't be around to see it. Some of the electrons that were once part of you are still around, I suppose, somewhere, but it's impossible at this point that anything that could be considered you could remain. Perhaps other universes exist or will come into existence. And if there are an infinity of them, then some entity very much like you could very well exist in them. But the you that you are now will be gone, irrecoverably forever. The light of life in the universe has guttered and been extinguished.